I'll struggle to find out the best storage method for your next DSP32 project. So this video is for you. Let's begin. So this article is in our medium page of Protonist. Uh, you are able to uh, refer it. Uh, the link uh, we will add it in the uh, video description. So first of all, you need to have a proper understanding about uh, the amount of the data that you need to save uh, in the internal uh, memory or the external memory. So uh, after you just just figure that out, uh, you can just uh, use this example uh, to get an idea about which approach you need to follow. So basically in here we have just referred DSP32 room 32 uh, which is a, a specific module in ESP32 but uh, there are certain other modules which has uh, different specifications so in this module uh, there is a volatile as well, well as non-volatile all of them there it's having and uh, in volatile uh, we are having the SRAM of uh, 520 KB which is used uh, for temporary variables uh, program slack and heap allocation and uh, in RTZ memory uh, it's used uh, to save the uh, save data in deep sleep and for internal flash memory it's one of uh, the type in non-volatile we can divide it to four so basically the main application firmware is in it and apart from that uh, there's a there are two file systems spiffs and little fs so in there we can save from uh, 512 kb to 2 mb of data and basically uh, it is used to save a moderate level uh, data like json uh, html uh, text uh, like files so moderate level data can be uh, save there and in NFS uh, which is also used as EEP ROM so in there uh, it is having uh, 24 KB of uh, data uh, and uh, it can be used to just save some uh, Wi-Fi credentials some uh, important uh, configuration files uh, which uh, does not change much so uh, there's a limit in there up to uh, it can only write up to 10,000 writes so there's a limitation in there and uh, other thing is OTA in OTA it is over there communication uh, which can be used to uh, update the firmware wirelessly so uh, if you are using that you need to allocate some space for uh, OTA as well and uh, apart from that there is external SD uh, in there you can just save uh, GB level data if you are having a much higher uh, if you if you need a much higher capacity you can go for external SD card so um, basically in this video we are only focusing on spiffs and uh, in spiffs we are saving the data in JSON format uh, which is one of uh, the standard data uh, structures uh, and basically in here the application is uh, like we are saving data for uh, daily uh, we are saving daily data monthly data sorry weekly data monthly data and yearly data so uh, if a new data comes in for a particular day uh, the whole indexing shifts and uh, the last month's data last year's data last week's data and last day's data will be updated and it will be saved uh, in this json file so that is our application and uh, when you are making the code you can just create uh, the if you are using arduino you can just create an arduino project and uh, inside that uh, dot in in this uh, dot ino directory you can just create a, a folder named data and inside that folder you can create a data.json file and uh, you are able to add this array this this array is for our application but you can just use any uh, number of arrays we have 
who are raising here and uh, basically if you are uh, using this uh, you need to have uh, Arduino JSON uh, and uh, to install it you can just click this link and uh, install the library and uh, after in after downloading this li uh, library uh, the zip file you need to unzip it and uh, you can just uh, paste it inside documents arduino libraries folder and for mac os and windows it's the same you can do that and uh, let's have a explanation on the code there so uh, first of all you need to import the libraries uh, Three of them are just built-in libraries for ESP32 board. So if you are having the ESP32 board installed, the first three uh, defini define, uh, definitions are there. So the last one, we just install it and uh, we just define the uh, data.json. And then let's talk about the setup file. Uh, in the setup file, first, uh, we just uh, initialize pips and then uh, we initialize the data in the uh, JSON file and then save the data and retrieve the data. So those are the uh, three functions that we're having. Uh, I will discuss that later. And now let's discuss on the uh, initialization of uh, spiffs. Like first we just open the uh, file and if it is not uh, open we just return from the uh, function so if there's a file we just uh, open it and create these arrays so adding the uh, arrays initially is not uh, compulsory since we are adding this here so uh, and also um, when you are storing data it's like this uh, you can just open the uh, file and then uh, since uh, we are saving the daily data and uh, re-indexing the weekly data and saving the current day's data uh, in for the replacement so that is what uh, we are doing for uh, month and year we are following the same process so uh, first let's uh, save the day's data like this uh, we just uh, update the daily data it, we are having only two variables uh, the duration and count and we are also saving the index as well uh, the index is also saved uh, for our particular application since uh, we needed uh, a proper struct a structured way to uh, retrieve the data so we are just having the index so that we can just easily retrieve and uh, after saving the day's data we just go for uh, weekly data and uh, for weekly data we just remove the oldest entry and uh, re-index it and after re-indexing there will be a vacant slot uh, at index 6 so uh, we remove index 0 and uh, re-index then index 1 become index 0 index 2 become index 1 likewise so the index 6 may be vacant so in that case we are just saving the new data in there as uh, index 6 so uh, it follows the same process for monthly as well as yearly data so for monthly we just uh, remove the oldest entry re-index it save it uh, yearly data uh, remove the oldest entry, re index it, save it. Uh, so that's uh, how it goes, and we just close the file. And uh, this is the uh, function for uh, re indexing. And uh, for retrieving the data, we just open the file and uh, we just uh, add a for loop there and uh, go through the uh, number of uh, data points and just uh, print the data so that is uh, what uh, this part this part does like for weekly and uh, monthly 
uh, ELE data, it follows the same process. So now this is the complete code and uh, you are able to customize it since we are just using two uh, variables and you can just save more uh, and uh, it, you can customize it according to your application. And uh, talking about installing uh, this plugin, um, first uh, you need to click this link and uh, you will be directed to something like this and you need to click uh, the first link there and uh, download it after downloading if you are using uh, windows uh, you can just uh, go to uh, home directory arduino tools and just paste the unzipped folder there so after that if you are using mac os uh, you should go for uh, documents arduino tools and inside that you can paste the uh, unzip folder and then um, you can just open the code as uh, we made like code.in or like so you can just open it and uh, you will see this esp32 sketch data upload you can directly click that and uh, the spiffs uh, spiffs image is up will be uploaded and uh, after uploading you will be seeing something like this and after that uh, you can upload the main, main firmware you can click uh, this button uh, and uh, upload and uh, when you are uploading spiffs you need to connect the esp32 with your computer use using the usb port and you need to select the port as well uh, before uh, uploading spiffs so keep that in mind and uh, after uploading uh, you, you can just open the CDM monitor and uh, change the board rate to 9600 so you will see uh, the past data and uh, the retrieve data and uh, you can just click the reset button and uh, see whether uh, the new data is updated like in the we are only having the uh, update when uh, the reset is clicked uh, we are only having that in setup so uh, you can just remove the cable and just connect it and try uh, whether the previous data is there uh, under, under the uh, json file so that is how it goes and uh, hopefully you have learned something on this like what to select a, a code into your application and uh, that's our goal in uh, making this video and uh, hopefully you will use this in your uh, project so uh, we are having an IOD design tool uh, which you can use uh, to make your own IOD project so it covers everything uh, you need to consider when making an IOD project so basically uh, from concept uh, to completion we are covering all uh, like if you are selecting the components if you are selecting the uh, cloud services if you are selecting um, the battery if you are selecting the display and if you are designing the PCB if you are designing the enclosure everything is there so you can just uh, use it uh, it's free and uh, if you need any consultations or if you need to do your project from us uh, that's also possible you can just uh, submit that form uh, in the tool and uh, we'll be able to work on it and uh, you can contact us at uh, info at protunes.co and uh, for regarding any nothing uh, uh, you can just contact us and uh, yeah so hopefully you learn something and uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, listening to the end have a nice day